This is just some vegetable stock. I'm not going to say brand because I don't want to get in trouble. Powdered vegetable stock. Once you get the onion and the chicken to a boil and skim off all the foam that the chicken lets out, you add that in. All you do with the chicken is plop it in to boil. I like to use all white meat boneless skinless chicken breast because it's healthier. And with the onion you cut off the ends and peel the skin off and you bring that to a boil. The chicken in the water causes a foam to rise at the top while it's starting to boil. You skim that off otherwise you're gonna have a very herby, earthy tasting soup. Kind of like dirt. So it ruins the flavor. You take it off and you let it boil. And this process could go on all day. However long you want to let it boil, that's how long you let it boil. Cutting the ends of the onion off. When you boil up your broth with the meat in it, chicken, beef, whatever you choose, it allows the juices from the onion to be absorbed into the water, flavoring the broth a little bit more. Instead of just having one flavor in your broth, you now have more. You salt the water, that flavors it too. You add the powdered um, vegetable stock, beef stock. That will help you to flavor your broth. You put all of this in before you put the rest of your soup together. Now when you're making soup for a sick child, it's not that good of an idea to have chunks of onion for them to chew on. So getting the juices out into the soup is a much better idea. It gives them all the nutrients from the vegetables and the meat because all they're going to eat out of the soup is the broth. This is a little nub of a carrot that I peeled. I'm going to shred it up and put it in while the broth is still making to get a little bit more flavor in my broth. Yeah, mommy's shredding carrots. Thank you, you're such a big help. I like to shred my vegetables that I'm putting in. There's a little bit of celery, a bunch of carrots, a turnip, and a parsnip that I shredded up and put in the soup. Before I did that, I took the onion out and the chicken. And at the moment, I am currently chopping up the chicken and I'm going to put the chicken back in the soup. As I add the chicken back into the pot, I pull it. The whole purpose of me slicing it is so that I'm able to cool it off enough to handle it. Like these three pieces are still too hot. So I'm thinking that I've got a little too much vegetables and a little too much meat in this pot for the amount of broth that I have. So I'm going to have to dilute it by adding some water and bringing it back up to a boil. Once I get it back up to a boil, I will add my spices, pepper and all that. But keep in mind, you can chop your vegetables, you don't have to shred them. I only do that because I've got a small child that likes to eat the soup without mommy's help. So by shredding it, it's easier for her to chew. Of course, I sit there and I watch her and make sure she's okay. But this soup is for her because she's not feeling good today. This is whole black peppercorns. I add a small handful to the soup. Now when I dispense the soup to my kids, I will pull them out, but everybody else is used to just spitting them out, or like me, I like to eat them. I think they taste delicious. But the whole peppercorns versus the cracked pepper allows more oils and more of a pepper flavor into the soup for some reason. I found this out from trial and error. So that's how I pepper my soup. 
So now, it's time to get the broth out for my wee one. Now it's okay if I give her a little bit of vegetables in with the broth, because it's not going to hurt her stomach all too much. And I want to make sure that I get more broth than anything else. So here's her allotment of vegetables and broth. Or vegetables and meat, I'm sorry. Now we just focus on the broth. And when it cools off a bit, I'm going to pick out these peppercorns for her and give this to her for lunch. So, that is how I make my chicken soup for my kids. Okay, so now that I've taken some of the broth out for my baby to have, I'm going to add in some fine egg noodles. I like to use egg noodles instead of regular noodles because they hold up a lot better. The thinner noodles are a lot better for the soup because it doesn't chunk your soup up as much. It gives it a nice starchy flavor. It's easier on the stomach than potatoes. And I honestly think it tastes better than potatoes when you put it in soup. So, I'll let my baby's broth cool off and put some egg noodles in it. And then when she eats her broth, this will be done cooking and I can put it in the freezer and store it. Now making soup at home, yes it takes a lot more work, yes it might be a little bit more money than buying a dollar can of soup, but you don't get the sodium, you don't get the MSG, you know what exactly is going in the soup, so if you're like me and you have food allergies, you don't have to read the label or worry about, well did they package this in the same facility that they package, you know, pork fat, or is there pumpkin seeds put in this, or this uh, golden soup with the butternut squash, did they throw some pumpkin in to make it, you know, a little tastier or whatnot? Allergies to food are more than just the common ones. The common ones are fish, shellfish, tree nuts, peanuts, soy, and dairy. But there's people out there that are allergic to more than just those. There's people allergic to chocolate, there's people allergic to strawberries, there's people allergic to apples, people are allergic to pork or pork fat. People like me are allergic to MSG, pork fat, and anything to do with pumpkin. Granted, I love pumpkins. So this allergy that came out all of a sudden. I can't carve a pumpkin anymore for Halloween with my kids. My husband has to do it. I can't cook them pumpkin seeds. I can't snack on the pumpkin seeds anymore. Do you know? Allergies aren't always something that you're born with either. You might develop an allergy as you get older. So making food at home, in my opinion, is a lot safer bet than buying pre-made food. Most of the time, they only put the main ingredients on the packaging, if they put stuff on packaging. So like when you go to a restaurant, you don't know if they cooked, you know, bacon on the griddle that they're making your eggs on, or you don't know what they're putting in their sauce. The recipes are trademark. They don't have to put every product on there, and they only have to warn about the main allergies, the most common ones. So, I'm gonna go and stir this soup. I hope you guys have a great day. If you guys would enjoy me making more videos, or if you like the ones I already have out, I would greatly appreciate it if you like my videos, you share, you subscribe to them. The videos are my nine-year-old daughter's idea. 
She wanted to show how to grow food and how to cook it because she believes that everybody needs to know how to grow food and how to make food. She puts it up as a very high priority. Hold on one. I apologize about that. I had to go do some mommy duties. My nine-year-old believes that one of the highest priorities, one of the most important life skills that anybody has is the ability to know how to grow their own food and how to cook their own food and not rely on anybody else for their food. Thus, I agreed to do this YouTube video with her. And in order to be able to make the videos, some of them I make without her. However, once we get down to editing, she tells me what she wants in the video and what she doesn't want in the video. She goes to school and I go to work. So she's not always here when I'm making a soup or when I'm checking on the garden because she's at school. And So, we work on it together, however, we also work on it separately. A lot of the times, she'll take care of the garden and I'm at work, so I'm not there to record it. But together, collaboratively, we are working on this channel so that more young people, such as herself, can learn the importance of growing food and being able to cook food. Is that yummy? Do you like it? Hey, can mommy help you? Mmm. Is that your favorite soup? Yeah.